coming from Genesis. If you want to, you can take notes. I'm going to kind of go from Genesis to 37th chapter. And I'm going to be moving from the 37th chapter on forward to the 40th and thereafter. So y'all can write these verses down in after the service. When the video is uploaded, I can share it with you all. Or y'all can have y'all want to do it. Just let y'all know that it will be accessible after the service. But I want y'all to just go on this journey with me. In Genesis, the 37th chapter, and the 7th verse, it introduces us to a boy named Joseph. Joseph was the son of Jacob and was his favorite son. Joseph had integrity and although some may have looked at him as a little telltale, Joseph was a very honest boy. He received dreams that, had, that he shared with his family and they hated him the more, his brothers. He received dreams that he was sure, and after his seventh dream, Joseph's own father got him about that dream. But secretly, Joseph's father, Jacob, Joseph's own father got on him, but secretly his father thought deeply about his dream because he knew that it was from God. Joseph's brothers plotted to kill him, but instead they threw him into the pit. Eventually, Joseph's brothers took him out of the pit and sold him into slavery. Now, although Joseph was in slavery, chapter 39, 2 through 6, it says, the Lord was with Joseph. I want y'all to remember that. The Lord was with Joseph. Say it with me. The Lord was with Joseph. Joseph. Okay. And he became successful. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian named Paul. Paul saw that the Lord was with Joseph. And that the Lord made all he did to prosper in Joseph's hands. Joseph found favor in Potiphar's eyes and had authority over everything. Because of Joseph, Potiphar's household was blessed. Potiphar left all that he had in Joseph's hands. But also, a little thing. Joseph was also handsome in form and in appearance. That means Joseph was good looking and he was fine. <laughs> he was fine. Okay. Amen. Joseph was well liked by the people in Paul's house and in Egypt. Joseph was a testimony to the true and living God. He was an honest and faithful worker, and everybody knew it. Now, knowing that Joseph had everything in his hands, even though he was a slave, remember, his brother sold him a slave, but he was still in charge. Next thing you know, Paul's wife mm. made a pass mm. at Joseph. Yes, she did. In other words, Paul's wife wanted to sleep with Joseph. Yes. He wanted, she wanted Joseph to take her to bed. Uh -huh. But because of Joseph's integrity, he said no. He turned it down. <laughs> and it wasn't that he was asked one time. He was asked many times. 
She kept pressing upon him to sleep with him, mm -hmm. to sleep with her. But he said no. So eventually, the scene was set. Because normally, there would be a lot of people in the house. Think about a millionaire. There's always servants and everything in their home. But one day, Father's wife was alone with Joseph. And so this time, the pressure was on. She pressed a little bit harder. I want you to sleep with me. And he said, no. And this time, even when she tried harder, not only he said no, but this time, when she grabbed his clothes, he got out of it and ran. His integrity wouldn't let him do that. Mm -hmm. He was an honest man. Mm -hmm. So, for the first time probably, because this is the king's wife, she probably used to people submit to her demands. For the first time, she was rejected. She said, hmm. So what did she do? She made a lie. She told a story on Joseph. She said that Joseph tried to rape her. And not only that, but there was evidence that she had something that belonged to Joseph. She had his coat. She lied and had proof for what she thought that it would be proof to show that she's telling the truth. Mm -hmm. So she lied on Joseph. And there's a little disclaimer. Sometimes what looked like is the truth could be a lie. Mm. So in other words, it makes us think from now on, anytime we get ready to find out something, anytime we get ready to uh we told the story, we already need to get to the root of the story. So that's a little side note. So Joseph was lied on by Paul's wife. And now Paul's wife have Joseph placed in jail. Genesis 39, 20 to 23 says. Then Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in prison. But remember, in the other chapter, it read the law was with Joseph. So verse 21 tells us, but the Lord was with Joseph. Once again, the Lord was with Joseph and showed mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. In other words, the captain of the prisoner. And the keeper of the prisoner, or the captain, committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in prison. Whatever they did, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority. Even in prison, Joseph had authority. Because the Lord was with Joseph. And whatever he did, the Lord made him prosper. Now, eventually, the king's butler and the baker went to jail. They were under Joseph's authority. They had a dream. Joseph told the baker that in three days he was going to be killed. But before he told the baker that, he told the butler, because both of them had a dream. He told the butler that in three days he would be out of jail and be restored into the position that he had. But Joseph begged the butler. When you get out, please remember me. Yeah. 
So that's the background of this message. Mm -hmm. Joseph, honest man, good character, yes. in jail. And he begged the buffalo, please remember me. Get me out of here. I didn't do anything to get in jail. Get me out of here. So today's message, we entitled it, When it seemed like being good ain't paying off. <laughs> when it seemed like yes. doing the right thing ain't paying off. Is that an ouch? That is. It is. When it seemed like mm -hmm. the good you were doing ain't good enough. Mm. My, my. Let's think about that for a minute. There are some people that you know ain't living a, a hill of being worth of trying to be a Christian. And they look like they prosper. But yet still, you go to church, you being faithful, and it seems like your life is going in chaos. When look like that crazy or that loose girl can get any man you want, any man that you want, but you, good lady, holding yourself before you get married. You come to church faithful and you still ain't got a man. <laughs> what about that dope dealer that's out there? He's selling drugs, making money, ain't even thinking about going to church. But yet still, that brother that goes to church faithfully open up the doors and he can't make his ends meet. Matter of fact, they ain't even close enough to wave at each other. <laughs> Think about that. Have anybody in here ever thought about how come the people that's living any kind of way doing better than me? That's right. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> like I said, we going to be real today. Let's be honest. It seemed like those that, I'm going to say it like this, that female that you know is cheating on her husband. Uh -huh. But her man take her around the world, taking her to the finest restaurants, driving her to the movies in the park, and you, your man driving you crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> How's that going on? <laughs> so, what do you do? Right. Even David, in Psalm 73, 2 and 3, he said, David said, my foot almost slipped yeah, that's right. when I saw the wicked prosper. In other words, he's like, wait, wait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This dude. Matter of fact, Brother Landon, he told a testimony a couple years ago. He said he was driving down the park on a Sunday morning. And he saw all the people running, jogging, and they playing, having fun, and he going to church and they Why in the world look like they having fun? And I'm stressed, I'm struggling. See, that's what it appears to be. Yes. So that's the reason why. I want us to remember, sometimes things ain't really what it seems like. That's But all of us, just like we be honest with ourselves, at some point of our life, we all have looked at how in the world they doing better than me. I'm going to tell you this, this is a little tough, like I said, I don't mind throwing myself on the bus. When I was a kid, my sister, she was, she's a year younger than me, but she was in the same grade as I was. She looked good, do her homework, be on the phone, 
Look at the radio, look at the TV, listen to the radio, have a headset on, chew gum, and don't even study. And get an A. <laughs> Me, I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm studying, I'm contemplating, and barely make a seat. <laughs> it seems like you're not perfect. But there's a reason. So, what do we have to remember? We got to think about it. Even though you may think that way, that doesn't mean you ain't saved. That's right. That's right. That's right. We're human beings. And like I always say, some people use it as an excuse for sin. Right. No. no. There are things that you question, you're like, wait a minute, what's going on? Yes. And like I said, that doesn't mean that you ain't saved, that doesn't question your salvation. It just means you just want to know. It might be something that you're not really paying attention to. Right. It might not be something that you're aware of. So it's okay to ask. That's right. So if David can think about that, and he's a man of God's own heart, that means you may even think about that too. And guess what? It's okay. It's okay. So what I want to talk about, there are some key things that I want to bring out in that story for us to think about. There are some principles. When those things happen where we see that it look like you're doing good, it look like you doing the best you can, and it seems like you're getting a short end of the deal. The first thing you need to do is evaluate yourself. Mm -hmm. Take a personal inventory of yourself. I want you to think about this. See if you are going through because of a punishment or because of a divine purpose. A punishment or a purpose. Now, a punishment is a correction or consequences that you get because of your disobedience. And if you realize, you know what? I was disobedient. Main thing you need to do is repent. That's the answer. Repent. Now, if you evaluate yourself and you realize you've done no wrong, then realize that it's not a punishment, but it's a purpose. And a purpose is what you're assigned because of your obedience, your character, or your guilt. So think about those things. If it's a punishment, if it's punishment, or purpose. Joseph, excuse me, not Joseph. There was somebody we know in the Bible named Job. Yes. Did Job deal with punishment or purpose? Purpose. 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 Right. So, what we do is take personal inventory and we look at when we are blameless, realize because of your obedience, your character, or your gift. The second thing for you to do is to forgive. Forgive those who do evil towards you. And realize forgiveness is not for them. Forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness cleans the slate. It cleans your heart. Forgiveness, regardless of what they've done, is not worth you holding on to unforgiveness. Because remember, there's a purpose. And sometimes God will allow your enemy to come to you 
but we see it as to hurt us. But understand, there is a purpose behind it. So, no matter what, forgive them. Even when Jesus was on the cross, you know what he said? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when people try to do wrong towards us, we got to forgive them. Why? Because they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. They really don't understand. Because a lot of times they may just see you and just, oh, she ain't nobody, he ain't nobody. But naturality to God, you're somebody. Yeah. And not just to God. But the people that love you, that really love you, they're not trying to use you. They really love you, you are of importance. Mm -hmm. You're important. So a lot of times people don't understand who they really mess with. So no matter what, forgive them. Forgive them. Because like I said, forgiveness, it frees you. But unforgiveness keeps you bound. Uh -huh. It makes you stressed. Like I always say, having unforgiveness in your heart is like Drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. It ain't gonna happen. Unforgiveness, it stops your growth. Your spiritual growth, emotional growth, mental growth. It blocks your bliss. So forgive and be free. Know that your gift will make room for you. Your guilt, think about this, your guilt will give you the interview for the job. But it's your character that gets you hired for the job. So be of the character of forgiveness and doing the right thing at all times. Ultimately, God wants to trust you with the position that he has for you. And that position could be anything. It could be your vocation, your job. It could be within the church. It could be within your community. Whatever. So just don't limit it to a nine to five. Look at it as purpose. That's why your heart has to be pure before God. Because ultimately, you being hired not by people but by God. You being evaluated by God, and God wants to trust you. The third thing: seek God's timing and not your own. Psalms thirty-seven and twenty-three says, "The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord." Mm -hmm. Now we think about this, going back to the story of Joseph. The last we spoke about Joseph, he told the butler, please remember me. Please remember me. I'm in the jail, I ain't did nothing. But Genesis, the 41st chapter, it tells us, and two years later, the king, Pharaoh, had a dream. And nobody could interpret it. And guess what happened? That's when the butler remembered Joseph. Mm. Two years later, mm. the butler remembered Joseph. In other words, when Pharaoh was trying to find somebody who can interpret the dream, because he had two dreams, and nobody could interpret it. All of a sudden, that's when the brother said, oh, I forgot. There was a guy that's in jail that can interpret dreams. Listen, two years later, mm. 365 and one quarter of the days, that's one year. Mm -hmm. But two, two years, two years later, sitting in jail, you know, the brother, before he got out, you know, Joseph interpreted the dream and helped the butler. And as, just imagine as the butler getting out, getting released three days later. Joseph said, remember me. And the butler said, I got you, man. I, okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And two years later, Joseph's still waiting. Have y'all had anybody that give y'all promise? I'm going to help you out. Sister Hall, I got you. Brother Vic, man, don't worry about it. I got you, man. I'm going to be there. I'm going to help you. And they don't show up. If anybody had to move and you expect people to help you, they say they're going to be there and then all of a sudden they don't show up, you don't want to help them move. So, Joseph, two years later, now he on their butler's mind. But realize, when you're on a divine purpose or an assignment, you're not going to get out or get released when you want to. Mm. You're not going to get out when you want to. You're going to get out when you need to. Mm -hmm. This is the thing. See, if you get out when you want to, then you are replaceable. When you go when you're wanted, not only you're replaceable, but oftentimes you're not appreciated. When you go and you just want it, then you just one in the crowd. But when you are going when you need it, that means you're established, you will be appreciated, you are a necessity. You are a necessity. How many of you have a heart? That was a trick question. <laughs> Everybody got a heart. <laughs> if y'all don't have a heart, this is the altar. We're going to have your services right here. <laughs> See, we have teeth, and if we lose the teeth, for those that are kids, their teeth will grow back. For those that are adults, we may not have another tooth growing. But we can have dentures. We can replace what's lost. But you can't replace your brain, your heart. Now, now they will have, you know, old heart surgery. But you have to have a heart. They say your uh, tonsils, you can have your tonsils removed. It's not a necessity. But your heart is a necessity. Think about this. Kool-Aid. You can drink Kool-Aid. And your body can go without Kool-Aid. But your body can't go without water. You can stop drinking Kool-Aid for the rest of your life. And it won't bother you. Actually, you're going to be healthier. But water... If you go without water, I guarantee you, you're going to end up dying. That's right. Why? Because your body, first of all, not only your body needs water, but your body is made up of mainly water. Mm -hmm. So, understand, when you go when you're needed, you are a necessity, you are the water of wherever you're going to be at. Whatever your purpose is pertaining to that, you are a necessity. So realize, in being in the steps of the good man, which are ordered by God, when you're in purpose, when you're waiting on God's timing, you will be at the right place at the right time for the right reason. Not because you need them, but because they need you. Remember that. The fourth thing, when it seemed like being good ain't good enough. When it seemed like doing good ain't paying off. Remember this. Justice delayed is not justice denied. Just because you deal with things and it seemed like those that have done you wrong, it looked like they're getting away. They're not. The Bible tells us that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So in other words, don't take it upon yourself to try to retaliate. <clears throat> Leave them in the hands of God. And realize 
that God will vindicate you at the right time. Remember, the right time, the right reason. You will not only be free of every charge, every accusation, evil acts done towards you, every hurt, every embarrassment that people have tried to put upon you, realize that you will be compensated. You will be restored. Not just getting what was rightfully yours, but getting it with interest. Yes. If anybody has ever owed the IRS, what they want, they want what you owe them. Right. And if you don't pay immediately, then there's going to be interest and penalties compounded. Is it yearly? Daily. Interest compounded. Monthly? Daily. Interest is daily. Daily. Not, it's not yearly. No. It's not monthly. Not weekly. Daily. Think about that. In other words, they're paying you, or excuse me, they're penalizing you because you have something that belongs to them. So when we look at it from the spiritual side, we have to look at there is something that the devil is withholding that belongs to us. And we need to collect. Mm -hmm. Like I said, not just the principal, mm -hmm. the but the interest and the penalty. Mm -hmm. If somebody owes you money, you have every right. Matter of fact, let me flip it. If somebody jacked up your credit, mm -hmm. not only you have the right to get what mm -hmm. charges they have put upon you, but also the penalty, the interest, and also the punitive damages. So I want y'all to think about it. not just, well, I'm going to get back what the devil stole me, but you're not getting the interest and penalties either. Mm. In other words, anytime God's children went through something, they prospered way beyond, way beyond afterwards. So this is what you have to think about. Purity, interest, and purity to damages. So, realize, to me, realize that you will be restored. And the last thing I want y'all to think about, this might be an alley, but it's going to help. There is a reason that it had to be you. There was an old song, I like songs. But there was an old song that said, It had to be you. It had to be you. So realize when you deal with something, it had to be you. God tailor made you for that specific assignment. God specifically custom made you to fight. Not just to be in the fight, but to win. win. But realize, he said that I will never leave nor forsake you. I will never abandon you in the fight. Matter of fact, he's walking you to the ring. He's in your corner. And this is what he wants you to do. There's a little, there's a little device he has in your ear for you to listen to him. He's going to tell you where to hit. When a duck, when a swing, when a block. And if you listen, like the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Right. The devil going to swing, but he won't lay in his punches. You have to listen. You have to train your spiritual ears because, because God is trying to help you not to get hit. How to say Bob and we. Yes. But what are we doing? We get hit. We get tackled. Right. Because we're not listening. Even on football. They have the people that sit up there. Up there the, 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 in the box. They have the mouthpiece speaking to the coach. And also even to the quarterback. 
Let him know, hey, look, see, you might be too close to the city. So let me tell you what I'm looking at from the whole field. Let me tell you where you're messing up at. And so the key thing for them to is to listen. But realize, it had to be you, but also what God is trying to do, God is trying to return you because there is a purpose behind the scenes. God don't want you to look at the scene. He wants you to look in the spirit, in the unseen. Because in the spirit, in the physical realm, in the natural, it will scare us. Even when, even when they saw, when they were crossing over to the promised land, it was 12 spies to check out the scenery. Ten of them said, there are giants, and we're grasshoppers to them. But two, he said, no. We can get them uncircumcised fellow signs. Right. We got them. That's right. got because they were looking at behind the scenes. They knew that there was a purpose. In other words, that was their territory that God promised them. Right. And so with you, there are your territory that God promised you. There might be some giants on your territory. Mm -hmm. But it's for your taking. In other words, it's for you to take out the giants. Right. But you got to listen. Because there's a strategic way. I say it like this. There are a million things, there's a million ways to do the right way wrong. Or do the right thing wrong. But there's only one way to do the right thing right. So who's going to help us to do the right thing the right way? God. We have to listen. Because remember, he's omnipotent. He's all soft. He knows all. He sees all. So God wants us to be able to look behind the scenes. But also, I found out this. I found out the opposite of faith is not fear. You know what the opposite of faith is? The opposite of faith is sight. What you see. Because you're going by what you see, and that ain't faith. God wants you to go by what you don't see behind the scenes. There is a purpose, and the devil trying to make us feel that the purpose is in front of us for what we see. But God is trying to feel to us that there's a purpose that's behind the scenes. So that way we can rely on him and trust him and not have our feelings within mm -hmm. the purpose that God is leading us to. Because we could get discouraged. Especially when those look at Joseph. Who was the first one that became his enemies? His family. His brothers. Trying to kill him. And then, his dad. So now, he's in a foreign country. But even when he was a slave, like I said, the Lord was still with him. And I'm, I want y'all to remember the name Joseph. There are some I'm going to share with you in a few minutes. But remember, God wants us to Look at the unseen. Galatians 6 and 9 and 10 tells us, And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are in the household of faith. Psalms 126 and 5, it tells us, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Proverbs 11 and 18 tells us, the wicked man does deceptive work, but he who sows righteously will have a sure reward. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, Unmovable, always about in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 13 says, For activity, but as for you, brother, do not grow weary in doing good. Psalms 145 and 15, it says, The eyes of all to the eyes of all look 
anticipatingly or expectantly to you, and you give them their food in due season. In other words, don't give up. Joseph seemed like, it seemed like he was getting the raw deal. But when we get back to the 41st chapter, it tells us 13 years before his brother had stripped him of his special robe. Now, this is after he interpreted the dream of Pharaoh, and Pharaoh now placed him in a position. Because at first, when he was there with Paul, he was under Paul. But now, since he ended up coming out, not when he wanted it, but when he was needed by the king, when he was needed by the king. Now the king gives him a special role that was far greater significant than the one that his brothers took from him and far beyond the one that father's wife took from him. Now he gets a signet ring and a gold chain. And those symbolize Joseph's authority as the seventh in command over Egypt. Now, who is that person named? The name we just talked about, the one that the brothers uh, heard him and all this stuff. What was his name? Joseph. 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 What does Joseph's name mean? Joseph's name means increaser. Increaser. In every situation that Joseph got in, when he was in slavery, he, he got in as a quote unquote common slave. But his name talked about his character. He never stayed at the entry level. He always was an increase. Mm -hmm. He always increased. He never, he never stayed where he began. Every situation that he dealt with, he increased from it. He didn't stay there. So your name may not be Joseph. Your name may not be Joseph Bean. If anybody in your name Joseph or Joseph mean God bless you. Right. Your name means increase. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter so much of what your name means. It doesn't matter what people call you. What matters is what you answer to. So my question to you is what are you answering to? This is me on a personal level. I don't let anybody call me dog or player. Because mm. my name ain't dog or player. Mm -mm. That's a character. Mm -hmm. So with you, look at what you allow people to call you. Mm. And ask yourself, is it making you increase? Mm. So I want you to think about, since we ask ourselves, mm -hmm. is being good paying off? Will being good pay off? The answer is yes. Don't let anything or anybody change your character in doing what's right. And doing what's good. You may, you may see that other people may be prospering and they may not be, like I said, may not be able to heal things. But you still do what is good. Because God is going to reward you and realize this is a personal thing. It's an individual thing. So don't worry about, even if you see, especially with the kids, I know there have been kids who might have cheated and passed, and all of a sudden it seems like you just about to get rid of the cheat and you get caught off. <laughs> Al, I said the same thing last week. I tried, I ain't gonna lie, I tried, I tried to cheat one time, I had, you know, white shoes and I had the answers. I think I had a rebox or something like that, and I had a rebox covered up, but I had the answers right there where a rebox would be at. I had a piece of paper covered up, rebox, and I had 1A, 2C, but I had the answers right there. Had everything planned out and still failed. <laughs> Why is that? Because actually, the one that knows the new right are the ones that always get caught. That's right. That's right. 
consciousness. So in other words, God loves us enough to catch our attention to let us know that's not your character. That's right. Other people may do it. It may look like they're getting away with it. Right. Right. But there are some consequences on down the road they're going to have to deal with. I'm being honest with you. How many people that you know that look like they just went to school and they, they just graduated, they look like they just got skipped on to school, but now they're adults. They can't read, they can't write, they can't count. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing against them, but the thing is, you can't have yourself because everybody else is going, you do the right thing at all times. Right. That's what matters. And so I encourage every one of you all who it may feel like what you're doing ain't good enough. You doing the right thing ain't paying off. You continue to do good. Right. And don't concern yourself about well, it looks like everybody else having fun. Don't concern yourself because I guarantee you, doing good and doing the right thing will pay off. Not just after a while when we get to heaven, but right now. Mm-hmm. It will pay off right now. Never allow anything or anybody to change your character or make you step outside of your character. There are so many people that we see, especially now in prom season, get ready to come, and prom season in the midst. There are some that look like the good people are being compromised. Look like the good people are being tested. You know, somebody may be, well, somebody may be playing, but you know, I'm going to go ahead and take this girl out on the prom and I'm going to see if I can get her virginity mm-hmm. on prom night. Now, for those who are contemplating, for those who feel like the peer pressure is too much for them, you hold on to doing the right thing. You keep yourself. Because I'm going to tell you like this. As long as they don't give you a ring, you don't owe them nothing. Right. That's right. You keep yourself. I don't care how the devil be trying to turn up the oven. You ask God to put some ice on that heel. Right. <laughs> you do the right thing at all times. Amen. And paying off will be for you. Paying off, like I said, not just after a while, but right now. Amen. And if there is anybody that feels like, you know what, I have felt like oh, well, I've been alone, even being good. Know that God been there for you and God is here to help you, to be encouraged, let you know you can make it. That's right. You can keep on doing it. Be the person of integrity. And right now, to be honest with you, the Christian, uh, Christianity is being tested. Yes. Yes. And the bad part about it is not outside of the church. It's within the church. Mm-hmm. Why? Because people have abandoned moral ethics, the character. People just use the Christian name as a label. But it's time for us to bring integrity back into our faith. I'm being honest with you. That's why you are so many of them, they go to other religions, especially Muslim stuff called that discipline. And they feel, people feel that Christians ain't just, we just, but let the Holy Ghost do it. Let God do it. No, 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 no. God said it's your responsibility. Right. God has given us the responsibility. Mm-hmm. And we have realized that we have failed. God hasn't failed. We have. So God wants us to get his house in order. And it first start here. Before we can make any impact into the world, we got to first impact the house. His house. We got to be people that up that are upright before Him, and up also each other. It used to be a point where you used to deal with a Christian person, and you know he can work on your car, he can work on your house. He's a Christian guy, understand? Mm-hmm. But now they don't mean anything. You pay them in advance to work on your house, and you don't see them no more. <laughs> Being honest with you. I'm going to say it like this. Meet somebody in church. Think you got a good man and he dog the mess out of you. <laughs> or I think you got a good woman. Mm-hmm. And come to find out, you married her. Come to find out she was already married. Mm. It happens. Yeah, but it's not good. No. It's not fair. No. But it's our responsibility now when we deal with people just because we hear them say they're a Christian, don't let your guard down. No. No. 
What we do is our responsibility to watch, observe. That's why the Bible tells us to try to scare about the spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Bible was written not for those who were saved, but for those who are saved. Because the devil is trying to use people to come in and take your joy, take your peace, rob your mind, take your joy, all those things. So you watch. And I'm going to tell you like this. If you got a question, ask. Go on soon. Ask. Ask. So as we get ready to pray, I hope that you take this message hard and for you to be encouraged knowing that doing good builds me on. Doing the right thing does pay off. Be a person of integrity does pay off. And like I said, not just when you make it to heaven, but even right now, because I guarantee you, when you do the right thing at all times, there will be something that you will get that some people don't get, and that's peace. Some people that be doing evil, they're not at peace. But God will help you to be at peace, and not just have any kind of peace, but his peace. Why the fuck are you doing the right thing at all times? Let us pray. For those who want prayer, you're welcome to come to the altar at this time. For those who have a special prayer request, you're welcome to come and know that God is here to help each and every one of us. No matter what situation you're dealing with, no matter what others have done towards you, know that that's not going to stop God from blessing you. Amen. I don't care what somebody have done. I don't care how somebody may have tried to scandalize your name, just like Palmer's wife did to Joseph. I don't care what happened. There will be your day in court, and you will be vindicated. Yes, and even if it seems like it ain't coming, just don't worry about it. Think about this. There is more evidence coming to show everybody that you're, you're, you're not guilty. That's right. That's right. Just look at it like this. Even if it don't happen, even if you're not vindicated after today or after tomorrow, and they're collecting the evidence to vindicate you, realize you're getting the penalty, the interest, and punitive damages. They add up. So don't worry about it. That means more money, more peace, more joy. And everything that they have tried to take from you, realize God will give you more. I ain't gonna say double for your trouble because he may give you, he may want to give you more, but you just may make him to double. That's right. He might want to give you triple. That's right. So no matter what the devil uh, devil devil minded people have done to you or towards you, don't even worry about it. Don't let that stop you doing good. Amen. Realize it will pay off. Like I said, not just after a while, but right now. There's no one that won't pray with you, know what I'm saying? Thank you, Heavenly Father, we come to you right now thank you, Lord, for your awesomeness, God. We come to you right now, God, thank you, Lord, for your awesomeness, God. God, we thank you, Lord, for helping us, God. Helping us, God, to be able to hear your word, God, and ask, Lord, to help us to apply it to our lives, God. God, help us, God, to not grow weary, God, in doing what's right or doing what's good, God. God, help us, God, to be upright before you, God. Help us, God, to have the strength and the courage, God, to do the right thing at all times. But God, we ask you to help us, God, with the power, with the strength, with the authority, God, to look beyond what we're dealing with right now, God, and look towards the hills from which come without help, and that's you, God. God, we speak, God, to strengthen those who may feel like giving up right now, God. Let them know, God, that they can make it right now, God. Help your people, God. Help all of us, God, to be able, God, to be a people of integrity, God. Help us to be upright before you, God. Help us to have good, godly character right now, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Help us, God, to not be sidetracked by those who may be doing evil, God. But, God, help us, God, to be able to even look beyond that, God, and do what you have us to do, God. God, we speak, God, for those, God, 
who have been hurt by others, God. We speak to God that you encourage them, that you heal their heart, heal their mind right now. In the name of Jesus, God, let them know, God, that you have left them, God. And even what they've dealt with, God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for healing their heart, healing their mind, God. And Lord, we speak to God that you help them to realize, God, that there's a testimony from this right now, God. And Lord, we even speak, God, for those who may be seeking for that purpose right now, God. Let them know, God, even what they've dealt with in their life right now, God, even what the devil meant for evil, you were turning for their good right now, God. God, you would use it for a testimony, God, to bring others to you right now, God. And we thank you for everything you've done, everything you want to do. And we bind the work of the devil in the name of Jesus. We bind everything that the devil has tried to do and turn up God's kingdom right now. We bind the work that he has done and we, we counsel his assignment right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for restoring God. We thank you, Lord, for everything you've done, everything you're going to do. Lord, we thank you for the joy and the peace, God, that you have given us right now, God. Not just, God, after everything was over with, but even right now, God, even while we we're waiting for justice, God, we know, God, even though it looks like justice may be delayed, but it's not denied, God. We thank you, Lord, for coming in, God, and vindicating us for any and everything the devil has tried to do right now. In the name of Jesus. Any accusation, any false accusation right now, God, we thank you for exposing truth right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, even those who are trying to embarrass and put a blame and put shame upon us, God, we thank you, Lord, for giving us open victory right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for everything you've done, everything you're going to do right now. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen.